Hey there, this is Ocean K with a detailed look at a new rack extension that I call Repeat. Now, Repeat is a four channel real time live looper. Now, a live looper is just something that allows you to record in audio and sample it and loop it in real time. And so you can overdub samples or you can record multiple samples and sync them up. It's just a way of recording audio in real time from a microphone or from a, an instrument or from a synth or anything you want and create these real time arrangements. So let's take a look at repeat in action, just a very brief uh, example, and then we'll talk about the detailed functionality of repeat. What I'm going to do is bring in an audio track, and this audio track is just feeding uh, my microphone. I'm going to turn the rack around and send the direct out of the audio track into the main ends of repeat. I'm also going to bring up a mix channel, and I'm going to have the outs of repeat go to the input of the mix channel. So I've got my microphone going into the audio track, it's being fed through repeat, and then back out to the mix channel. So if I set channel 1 in repeat to record, and then I start recording a little bit of a loop, and then I start recording a little bit of a loop, Right. So we and then hear I start that recording a little bit of a loop. I've got some audio that's just and then I automatically start recording a little bit of a loop. And of course, I can overdub. I can record and then a I second start loop on top of that loop. loop. And overdub. I can record. And then I start recording a little bit of a loop. Overdub. I can record. And then I start recording. And so that's essentially how this works. You can record uh, four channels uh, and with some uh, um, extensions. You can record almost unlimited channels. Uh, and uh, overdub on those channels and sort of mix and bounce them around. And you can just do lots of interesting real-time looping um, with repeat. So this was just a very basic uh, overview of how the, it functions. I've created a, a video that shows me building up an entire song in real time with repeat. So if you're interested in seeing repeat in action, go check out that video. Uh, I'll put a link for that video in the description to this video. Uh, so to see repeat in action, go to that video. But for now, let's look at some of the detailed functionality in repeat. Now, the often the first thing you do when you're dealing with live loopers is you set the, the length of the loop. Now, the length of the loop can be set in three different ways in repeat. The first one is, by default, the tempo of repeat is set to match the tempo of the reason sequencer. So in this case, the default tempo in reason is 120, and so the tempo in repeat is set to 120. Now if I change the tempo in reason to be 125, we see that the tempo in repeat is 125. And what that means is that repeat automatically has a two-bar loop at 125. Well, if it was at, say, 120, and you wanted, instead of a two-bar loop at 120, you wanted a four-bar loop at 120, well, you could just set the tempo to 60 BPM in uh, the reason sequencer, and so it's uh, 60 BPM in repeat, and a two-bar loop at 60 BPM is actually the same length and tempo as, uh, or same length as a uh, four-bar loop in 120. So that's sort of a cheap and easy way of getting different loops, uh, loop lengths, when you know the BPM that you're shooting for. Well, if you wanted to start with a BPM but you don't know what BPM it actually is, you can just start tapping, and this uh, it'll tap. You know, after uh, you know three or four or five taps, what the average BPM is of your taps. And so in this case, one sixteen point one BPM. And again, it'll be a two-bar loop of uh, at one sixteen point one BPM. Okay. The third way, and honestly, the way that I use most often is by uh, setting the length of the loop after you've recorded the first loop. So say you don't know the exact length of the loop, what I can do is clear the loop. I'm going to clear the audio on channel 1. I'm going to record channel 1, and when I get to the end of the loop, I'm just going to press end. So I will start, and I'll record just 
maybe a, a, a one measure. I'll be I'll count one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, okay. two, three. So I didn't know four. how long one, that okay. two, uh, loop was going to three, be. Four. But when I got to the one, end of the loop, two, I hit three, end, and then four. repeat just automatically one, figured two, out the exact length three, of the loop. Four. One, okay. two, now, in three, terms of available buffer one, size, okay. two, if I hit three, uh, clear and I press play, now instead of sort of a, a meter that shows me the length of the loop, uh, this now becomes a bit of a countdown of my available buffer length. Now the available buffer in repeat is about one and a half million samples. So at 44.1, that's somewhere around 35 seconds or so. Uh, at 120 BPM, that's about a 16, 60 measures, I think. Um, and so you have that length of time to set your loop. So if you just start and this becomes the point where you want to end the loop, you just hit end and now you get a marker of uh, of sort of the time through that loop. And you can clear any time and hit end any time, and that will be your new loop length. Now, this loop functionality where you don't set it until the first time through the loop, in the sort of uh, live looper industry, um, that's called first loop functionality. And it's called that because obviously you don't know the length of the loop until you set it by the length of the first loop. Okay, so that's how to set the the length of the loop. If you wanted to move between these, so for instance, right now we're in the uh, first loop, so the length of that loop, but I wanted to get back to uh, my tap tempo, I could just start tapping and re uh, repeat will then move to the tap tempo. And if I've done the tap tempo, but then I wanna move to the reason sequencer, I just, edit the reason sequencer tempo and it'll move back to that. So whichever the latest way is that you use to set the length of the loop, that'll be the way that repeat uses to set the length of loop. And you can move through those different ways uh, in uh, all in real time. Okay, so that's how to set the length of the loop. You've seen that we've got our play and record buttons. Uh, record, when we want to record onto one of these channels, we have to press record, but we also have to arm one of the channels. So just like in a normal DAW, uh, you just enable one of these, you arm one of these channels. So in this case, when play is selected, uh, and record is selected, and channel two is enabled, it'll record audio on channel two. So if I'm playing along and it's now recording on channel two, if I deselect channel two, so it's not recording on channel two any longer. Channel two. If I've got channel two enabled, but I'm so not hitting record any longer, then it's not recording on channel two anymore. Two enabled, so so all three have along, to be enabled, play, record, two. And uh, one of the enabled tracks. Now you can record on multiple channels at the same time. So right now, audio is being recorded to both channel two and channel three. So right now, audio is being recorded to both channel two and channel Now, looking at our channels here, we've seen how we enable uh, each channel. Each channel also has a fader that's just volume, and this zero line. That's full volume, and so everything above that is actually a little bit of an amplification of whatever audio is in there. We've got this X, and this X is the, the clear channel. So in this case, if I have, uh, I don't even know if I have any audio on channel 1. Let's record some audio on channel 1. Record some audio on channel one and more audio on channel one. Record some audio on channel one. Okay, so I've got a loop on playing on channel, channel one. Record some audio on if channel one. If I wanted to erase audio this audio, on one. Record. I just hit clear. And now all of the audio that was on channel one is erased. Channel the channel on other, the audio channel. on other channels is still there. It's just this erases one, this erases two, and so on. There's also a mute, so you can uh, silence the audio without erasing it. You can just mute it, uh, and obviously you can pull down the volume on it as well. Now there are also two aux sends for repeat. These, uh, the top knobs for all channels are aux one, and the bottom knobs are all aux two. If we wanted to bring up, let's say, a scream, 
we can have our screen be on aux one. So we set our send and return. And now if we've got audio, channels at the same looks like we have audio on channel three. Channel two. And channels, channels at the same time is being recorded to both channel two. And I can just bring up that aux send and send that through channel two. Uh, through and channels screen. at the same time. Being... Okay, so that's uh, those are our auxes. We've got our clears, our mutes, our volume fader, and our enables. And then obviously each channel has its own uh, small meter. Okay, so that is how you do uh, how, the functionality of these channels here. Now these enable buttons, they enabled you, they arm the channel for recording, but they also, if you notice, these lights light up that correspond with the enable buttons. So when I enable channel three, the uh, three button is, is illuminated there. And this section is called is the bounce section. And what happens is if I have audio on channel one and audio on channel two, and I want to combine that those uh, channels and put them on channel four. Uh, I, you know, it's just called bouncing. What I do is I enable channel one and channel two as our bounce source, and then I enable channel four as our bounce destination. And when I hit bounce, then all of the audio that was on channel one and on channel two is now on channel four, and channel one and channel two are empty. Now you can also do like a merge. So if there was audio on channel one and audio on channel two, and I set my destination for channel one, then what would happen is the audio on channel one and audio on channel two would be combined and it would be put on channel one and then channel two would be emptied out. So you can merge as well as bounce. And you can also do both at the same time. In fact, if there's audio on channel two and different audio on channel two, uh, sorry, audio on channel one and different audio on channel two, if both one and two are the source and one and two are destinations, what will happen is the one audio and the two audio will be combined and the combined audio will be put on one and on two. So there's a fair amount of just flexibility around bouncing and merging. So that is our bounce. And then we've got uh, just a master uh, output volume. Uh, and output at 100%. Uh, so there's actually a double um, amplification here uh, on your master out. So that's pretty much the functionality of repeat, at least on the front. If we look on the back, we've got our main ins and outs. We also have individual outs. So in this case, just the audio that's on channel one will come out of one and just on two and just on three and just on four. And we've also got a bypass here. So if we're playing audio and we've got mic in, but we're not recording to any channel, that audio will be sent to bypass. But if we are recording to channel one, then the audio isn't going to come from bypass. It's going to come from channel one. And this is so if you wanted, you know, to EQ everything on channel one. So maybe channel one is going to be all your drums and you're going to want to EQ that uh, a special way different from two, three and four. If you're recording on channel one, every when you record, what you're recording in real time is going to get immediately EQ'd. So you don't have to wait for that signal to come around a second time for that to get the EQ. Okay. Uh, we've got, we saw our audio auxes uh, one and two. And then there's another thing here called sync. And this is, I got to say, one of my favorite things about repeat. If I bring a second repeat and I send the master from my repeat one into slave of uh, the repeat two. When I press play on the repeat one and play on two, it now syncs. I don't know where this audio is. Okay. Uh, it now syncs this repeat and this repeat. So let's say, for example, I have. Um, on this repeat, I want to record, um, I'm going to clear this and start a brand new recording. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, Okay, so I've just recorded four. one, two, three, four. One, two, and now three, if I four. One, sent two, the, three, uh, four. My one, microphone two, into here, three, 
four. One, two, 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 three, three, four, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. This four. is not a great way of two, showing it, but actually, two, why don't I? Three, four. Why two, don't I bring a line two, mixer? Three, four. And instead of sending directly out from um, repeat, I'll send directly out from a mixer. I'll have. Uh, my outs of my one, two, first one, three, going into one, four, and first four, one going into one, two. two, 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 three, three, four, four, one. Now two, those are two, synced two, just three, like I played three, them. Four, four, two, one, two, 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 three, three, one, two, 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 one, two, 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 three, three, four, four. One, See, so two, these two, two are now two, three, linked. Three, four, so if one, I wanted more than four channels uh, in repeat. I now have eight linked channels. And so anytime I play them, uh, they will play in sync together. So this is a repeat is a four channel live looper, but in fact, um, it's almost an infinite number of channels because they can all sync together. Okay, so you don't have to set, you can tell that, for example, the repeat one, its tempo is different than the second, but that doesn't matter because every time repeat one starts back at the loop, repeat two will start back at the loop. And so you can slave these, you can sort of chain slaves where uh, if we bring in a third one, we've got the master from one going into the slave of two, and then we can have the master of two go into the slave of three. And so if we clear this out, all one, three of these two, two, will now two, play in two, sync together. Okay. Four. So that is the basic functionality of repeat, a real-time live looper. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to post them on the forum. Uh, I'm there all the time. Or you can send me an email at reinfo at oceank.com. The link should be, or you know, the email address should be in the description of this video. I hope you like it. Uh, let me know your thoughts. I'd love to see any videos you create or songs you create with repeat. Um, otherwise, I will see you around.